Assalamualaikum. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. We are doing Fahmul Quran, Juz 26. Inshallah, today we're going to do Surah Al Hujarat. Let's begin. Nahmadu wa nusalli ala Rasulihi al Karim. Amma baad. Auz billahi min al-Shaitan. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Surah Al Hujarat. Ya ayyuhal lazina amanu la tuqaddimu bayna yaday Allahi wa Rasulihi. Wattaku allaha inna allaha samiyun alim. O oh, you who have believed, do not put yourself before Allah and His Messenger. So don't try to get ahead of Allah and His Messenger. Means do not put your own statement before statement of Allah and His Messenger. When the command of Allah comes, then don't put your will, your wish, your feelings before the command of Allah. So when command of Prophet comes, then again don't put your wish about the command of Rasulullah. You should not think contrary to what Allah and His Messenger have said. You should not feel otherwise. Rather, you should say, Samena Watana, Wattaqullaha, but fear Allah. Indeed, Allah is hearing and knowing. Ya Yuhan Lazina Amanu La Tafau. Aswatakum fauha sautin nabi. O you who have believed, do not raise your voice above the voice of Prophet. This was in his lifetime and also remembered today. Wherever Prophet is mentioned, where his words are being mentioned, his life is being studied, then we have to show respect in the gathering also. Where he is mentioned, we must not yell over there. We must not do anything that is disrespectful over there. You know, some people, they start talking and they are discussing. No, when Quran and Sunnah, we should give respect. When a person goes to Masjid of Prophet Wasallam, again, he must observe respect over there and not do anything that may be disrespectful and part of being disrespectful is raising the voice. We learned that once a Saiba Yazid, he said that I was standing in the masjid and somebody throws small pebbles at me. If they were trying to get my attention, so I looked. I found that it was Umar bin Khattab. So, I went to him and he said to me, fetch those two men for me. So I went and I got those two men. And when they came, Omar Radiallan who asked them, who are they? So where have you come from? They said, we are from Atayib. He said, if you were from the city of Medina, I would have punished you. Because you are raising your voice in Masjid of Rasulullah So making noise in Masjid of Prophet Wasallam. It's not allowed, you know. And also, uh, what does this show to us? Like, you know, to understanding of the Sahaba was that even after a death of Prophet ﷺ in his masjid, you know, when people go there, they should keep their voice low. And this is something that we must remember. Because when we go to masjid of Prophet ﷺ and when we want to go to Roda, what happens, especially women, their stampede, noise, disrespect, the way each other's hijabs are being pulled and women are being pushed and shoved. Yani it extreme disrespect. Any masjid, it's not right. Especially masjid of Rasulullah. It's not acceptable at all. And then we see over here that part of respect is to lower the voice. And earlier we were told that when Prophet Wasallam his command comes, when Allah's command comes, then don't put yourself before that, above that. Keep yourself behind. So we learn that once Imran ibn Hussein, he mentioned a hadith of Prophet in the company of some people. And what was that hadith? That Prophet said that Al-Hayaw Khayru Kullahu, the modesty is all good. So, Haya is all good. So, one person who was sitting there who heard that statement, he said, but we have read in some book that one kind of modesty is good and there's another kind of modesty which is from the weakness and that is not good. So, Imran bin Hussein, he got angry over there and he said, 
I am telling you about Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and you are telling me what you have read somewhere else. Meaning when the statement of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam comes, you don't try to counter that statement with any other. It's a disrespectful. So we have to remember that. Do not be loud to him in speech like the loudness of some of you to others, lest your deeds become worthless while you perceive not. So how frightening this is that a person goes to Allah and find his record empty, every good deed cancelled out, his effort, everything ruined. Why? Because lack of respect. You see, many times we don't know how to observe the proper respect. We are performing salah but do disrespectfully. We are reciting Quran but disrespectfully. We are saying our duas but without any respect, without adab. is so important. Adab is what beautifies the deed you have performed. It beautifies it. You see, if somebody brings you your favorite thing, you, what you do? you like it you say thank you and you appreciate that you don't insult that that's how there should be other for everything for every good deed have a proper other we need to be careful about it and uh, surah al-hujrat ayah number three indeed those who lower their voices before the messenger of allah they are the ones whose hearts allah has tested for righteousness for them is forgiveness and great reward uh, Yes, Allah has checked their hearts. In their hearts, Allah has found righteousness. Who's those who do, those who observe it? The adab. Indeed, those who call you Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam from behind the chambers, meaning from outside of your home, from outside of your rooms. Most of them do not use reason. So here many outsiders they would come to Medina, they would be looking for Prophet they would be walking outside the house and they would say Ya Muhammad Ikhraj Alayna if they were ordering somebody that oh Muhammad come out we are waiting for you yani, this is so disrespectful in the caller or not even once does Allah address Prophet saying Ya Muhammad not even once you will find Ya Ayyuhan Nabi, Ya Ayyuhar Rasul. Why? Because Allah is teaching us that when you address your leader, you don't address him by name. You don't say, Oh Muhammad, no, you have to observe respect over there. And if a person does not do so, then it shows that they don't have reason. And if they had been patient until you could come out to them. It would have been better for them. Why were they calling you in the first place? They should have waited for you. But Allah is forgiving and merciful. Ya yuhallazina amunu again. O you who have believed, if there comes to you a disobedient one with the information, investigate, lest you harm a people out of ignorance and become over what you have done regretful. Meaning before taking any action, find out who you are dealing with. We learn from the example of Umar Radiallahu that when he called those two men, he didn't punish them immediately. He asked them, who are you? Where have you come from that? Perhaps there is a reason, right? Why you're not observing the proper etiquette that maybe you don't know. So he didn't take any action against them. So this shows to us that any time we hear some information before taking action, what is necessary? Investigate. Otherwise, what will happen? You will be regretful later on. Doesn't it happen so many times in our lives that we ask who put the food outside? If we get upset with the children, I didn't do it. Then you remember, oh, you did it. You understand? Sometimes it happens. You yourself did it. And later on, you realize, oh, I did it. And you feel embarrassed yourself. Isn't it? And knows that among you is the messenger of Allah. If he were to obey you in much of the matter, you would be in difficulty. But Allah has endeared to you the faith and has made it pleasing in your heart. So here, Allahumma zayyina bi zinati iman. 
May Allah grant us the same faith that Iman is beautiful in our hearts. We like it and it beautifies us and has made hateful to us disbelief, defiance and disobedience. So how fortunate is this person who loves good, who hates disbelief, who hates defiance and disobedience. Those are the rightful guided. Here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says they are the rightful guided. So uh, it is a bounty from Allah and favor and Allah is knowing and wise. And if two factions among the believers should fight, then make settlement between the two. But if one of them oppress the other, then fight against the one that oppress until it returns to the ordinance of Allah. And if it return, then make settlement between them in justice and act justly. Indeed, Allah loves those who act justly. You see, when the heart of Muslims are cut off from each other, then what is it that we have to do? Let them be. It's their own problem. I should, uh, I should mind my own business. No. When Muslims are fighting with each other in front of us, then we cannot let them fighting. We have to do something to mend their relationship. We cannot let them stay like that. Don't think let them deal with it. It's their own problem. No, it's everybody problem. We cannot be silent observer because you see right now it's a conflict between two people and gradually those two people will find their supporters and this conflict will no longer remain as a conflict between two people. What happens when a husband and wife are fighting? Fighting constantly, eventually what happens? Will the children take sides? Yes, they do take sides and family is now divided. It's a split. We see this. So when you see people fighting with each other, whether it is at home, even children, sometimes children are fighting and parents say, oh, let them fight, let them fight. They will learn to be strong. No, okay, you let them solve their problem, but don't let them keep beating each other. You have to let them disagree. Let them solve their own problems, but under your observation to ensure there is no oppression and injustice over there because they, this is no fair. This is not fair. We cannot let injustice happen in our own eyes. So even two friends, then they fight what we do. We think it's okay. No, it's not okay. You have to look into them. Don't let them remain like that. Oh, it's their, uh, it's their problem. They are not uh, talking to each other. No, you have to do something about it because soon it will become everybody's problem. So we can never be silent observer because mutual fasad, it leads to more, more fasad. So what we learn as Surah Al-Hujrat, Ayah number 9, if somebody is fighting, you have to reconcile them, you have to resolve the problem. Don't be spectator, just watching, enjoying, and you're thinking, oh, I'm not saying to anyone. No, that's not right, whether in the family or the friends. The believers are but brothers, so make settlement between your brothers and fear Allah that you may receive mercy. So don't let believers, you know, cut up from one another and sit away from each other with hatred in their hearts and bad feeling. No. Do something to solve those problems. Prophet ﷺ said, believer is the believer's mirror. And the believer is the believer's brother who guards him against loss and protects him when he is absent. So... You see, all believers, all of us, we are related by Iman, regardless of our color, race, culture, or background. Regardless of that, what is it that unites us? Iman, our faith. So we should never let this dispute grow because those who solve disputes, what do they earn? They receive mercy and we all want mercy, isn't it? Prophet said, shall I not tell you about the charity which Allah loves to be given? Allah loves that kind of charity should be given. Should I not tell you about that? Would you like to know what kind of charity is it? Allah loves that. When a person gives it, Allah loves the fact that it is being given. Which charity is that? 
that you call sala between like you know sula between people and it is a charity yes because like you have to give a huge amount of money away and that's difficult trying to solve a dispute between two people like giving money sometimes it's easy but you know doing the sula between the like reconciling the people it's not easy thing you have to spend hours sometimes you have to spend your energy efforts and sometimes even they will say say something to you even though they are saying something to you still you have to keep the patient you have to have the sabar no matter what so surat al hujrat aya number 11 ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu o you who have believed let not the people ridicule another people so here adab are taught here so don't ridicule uh, when another perhaps maybe they may be better than them not let women ridicule other women perhaps they may be better than them so here separately men and women has been taught the etiquettes why is it not said that men should not make fun of women and women should not make fun of men generally women make fun of women but this shows to us that there is no such concept in our religion that men and women sit with one another non mahram and then men are making fun of women and women are making fun of men in casual conversation but what has happened today that we have crossed all these limits and we say oh we are friends in casual conversation and even make fun of each other making fun of each other in something that not allowed we should not do that who is it that a person make fun of those who he think lesser than himself and you know sometimes when we talk about mahram non mahram we sit together and we say oh we think him as a brother we think him as a sister and we started naming them and making fun of them oh he, her husband is that uh, like you know so on so forth we we start talking about non mahram also and we give uh, tags and we give uh, things which are not allowed in islam so here there's a hadith prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said it is sufficient evil for a man to look down on his muslim brother you know we are thinking something this is sufficient evil for him this is sufficient to show that yes this person is bad what he looks down on his muslim brother or oh, what a pathetic choice what a bad choice no this is something that does not befit for a believer he looks down on another himself he is humiliated in the sight of allah there's a another hadith prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said all things of the muslim are inviolable for his brother in faith his blood his wealth and his honor so remember the honor of other people is sacred we cannot attack the honor of other people by making fun of them in front of them or behind them do not insult one another do not do that there is a hadith prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said if a man abuses and shames you for something which he finds in you then do not shame him for something which you find in him he will bear the evil consequence for it meaning do not retaliate by insulting back generally what happens if we are insulted we insult double in return what does prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said do not do that do not retaliate by insulting back allah will reward you for your patience for the one who started for him is the sin this does not mean that a person cannot have fun people cannot joke with each other but you have to be very careful when joking with each other when having fun because it's very easy to cross the limit or oh, and overstep and hurt other people's feeling causing embarrassment humiliation we should be sensitive towards the feelings of one another insulting one another is not correct it is not right to insult another person for his appearance for his job for his accent or family background and so on and so forth this is all jahaliya ignorance and do not call each other by offensive nicknames do not do that wretched is the name of disobedient after one's faith and whoever does not repent then it is those who are wrong doers 
Oh, you who have believed, avoid much negative assumption. Indeed, some, some assumption is sin. You see, assumption leads to many evils. Prophet ﷺ, once he looked at Ka Kaaba and he said, Marhaba, you know, uh, that you are amazing, O Kaaba. Ma Azma Ki, you are so honorable, is your harama. And the believer is more sacred dear Allah than you. Means more sacred than Kaaba. So sacredness, it's one of the type. But for the believer, there are three things that are sacred. His blood, his wealth, and that none should think evil about him. Okay, blood, wealth, and none should think evil about him. None should entertain Zanusu. Means another believer. This is part of disrespecting other believer. You know, uh, evil thoughts. Abdullah, he said, the person who has had something stolen from his continues to be suspicious until he is worse than the thief. You understand? He becomes worse than the thief. He stole one object. But the person who object was stolen, he had become suspicious of so many people. Blaming 5, 10 people, then what happens at the end is more sinful than thief. You understand what I mean? Like, you know, somebody stole something. Okay. But the person whose thing is gone, he or she, for example, somebody's person, uh, person's uh, purse was stolen. And she must be thinking, oh, he, she, 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 like, you know, maybe 10 people came. So that zan leads to more suspicion and more sinful act. Instead, what you should do, uh, live on Allah. Allah knows who stole it. La make dua, Allah, please give me back my bag or my purse. Somebody stole it. So don't do negative assumption. Even though sometimes, you know, it's 100% correct. But sometimes it may be other way wrong. It can be incorrect. It may be wrong. Then Zan is very evil, repel, negative thought about other people. Never assume evil thoughts about other people. Always give them benefit of doubt. 70 excuses. Do not spy or backbite each other. Would one of you like to eat the flesh of his brother? When dead, you would detest it and fear Allah. Indeed, Allah is accepting of repentance and merciful. You see, Allah has obligated uh, you know, some of the hukum, like, you know, fasting. Why? So that we are cured of spiritual disease. And part of spiritual disease is ghaib. Uh, ghiba. Sorry. Ghiba is like uh, eating the flesh of your dead brother. In fasting, we don't even eat halal meat. And how can we allow ourselves to eat haram? What happens in fasting when halal food is brought to you? Good food is brought to you. What do you say? No, I'm fasting. I'm not going. The same thing when you're fasting. How can you backbite? And um, when you are fasting, you say, no, I'm fasting. What about the riba? Don't consider it lightly. Okay, backbiting. And he is saying something about your brother, what he does not like. Something that he would dislike. He doesn't want that you would. you should say that about him. But many times you say, oh, but it's right, it's true, I can say in front of him also. No, that's not right. The thing is that when a person has greater things to worry about in his life, then what happens? He does not take interest in the mistakes of other people. He's focused on his own mistakes so that he can improve himself, so that he can achieve great results. We learn that once the Sahaba, they said about a man in the company of Prophet ﷺ, if this man is not fed, he doesn't eat. If he is not given a ride, he will not even sit on a ride. Meaning he only does things when you tell him. He has to be spoon fed. So their Prophet ﷺ said, you have done backbiting of him. Sahaba said, but we have only spoken what is in him. He, he likes that. Prophet ﷺ, it's enough for something to be riba that you state what you find in the other. Yes, it is in the other way. Why do you need to say? Why do you need to talk about it? Isn't it understood? Isn't it well known? The faults of people 
are they not well known everybody knows why do you have to talk about it so here we are forbidden from zan we are forbidden from uh, tajassus also what is tajassus spying because you see first a person assumes a negative assumption then he looks for a proof to get assurance so he looks at other people's phone their bags their computer staring at other people's screen looking at their email there is a hadith prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said if you search for the faults of people you will corrupt them or you will nearly corrupt them you will corrupt them that just to spying on each other this is something that corrupts relationship and you see any relationship what is the basis of a good relationship trust and when there is no trust that relationship cannot survive long whether it's friendship or it's marriage or within in laws or with coworkers siblings parents children whatever it is trust is something essential otherwise people will get fed up you have to show trust in order to receive trust show trust to other people i trust you i believe you you can do this and i know you are on it show in trust and you will receive trust also there's a hadith prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said if somebody listens to the talk of some people who do not like him to listen or they run away from him then molten lead will be poured into his ear on the day of resurrection allahu akbar meaning if a conversation is being held in privacy okay people don't want you to hear it for that reason they have closed the door for the reason they stepped outside and if you go closer to the door if you also go outside in order to listen to what they are saying this is a major sin the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said molten lead will pour into the ear on the day of resurrection this is a hadith from abu daud authentic so never try to listen to the conversation of the other people whether it's on the phone or in the bedroom anywhere private conversation respect it but you know these days we record the conversation without even knowing the other party that's incorrect don't do that and sometimes we keep the gadgets and record it just to show the people no never this is also tajassus there's a hadith prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said a community of people who have believed by their tongues and believe has not yet entered their hearts do not backbite muslims do not search for their faults for if anyone search for their faults allah will search for his fault and if allah searches for the faults of anyone he will disgrace him in his own house so we see that someone who accuse others in himself get accused you see any family that is broken any team that is uh, dysfunctional these problems are found in them what are this problem lams tajassus zan ghiba all of these problems are found in them any dysfunctional team any group of people that are not united whose hearts are disunited family that is broken whatever otherwise it's not possible that it will be ruined because the home in which there is respect people don't fight there they have uh, like you know respect for one another if you have disrespect if you have like you know riba tajassu zan riba it's not going to flourish there's a hadith prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said he who has six qualities when he dies then allah guarantees that he shall admit him into janna paradise one of them is the person who stays at home neither backbiting a muslim nor being a cause of anger or punishment for anyone if he dies in this condition then allah guarantees janna for him because you see when we over socialize every day we have to go to somebody's house or somebody has to come to our house or we have to talk somebody you know chill with somebody then chilling what happens we start lightning fire for ourselves we are apparently chilling but we are lightning fire for ourselves we are destroying our deeds because you know too much socialism we talk 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 and when we talk when we talk the things which we are not supposed to 
collective gathering for the sake of Allah. If you are doing bayan, if you are listening to Quran and Hadith, that's fine. But other than that, try to avoid such things. It's not appreciating. Sometimes what happens, we do collectively some work for the sake of Allah. But if you have some misunderstanding or anything, you know, just clear that thing. And inshallah, everything will be fine. Otherwise, giba, this, that. We don't want such things. Surah Al-Hujrat, Ayah number 13. Ya ayyuhan nas, O mankind. Indeed, we have created you from male and female and made you people and tribe that you may know one another. These differences are there. Difference in color, race, ethnicity, background. So that you know each other. Indeed, the most noble of you is the sight of Allah is the most righteous of you. Indeed, Allah is knowing and acquainted. The Bedouin says, we have believed, say you have not yet believed, but say instead we have submitted for faith has not entered our hearts. If you obey Allah and his messenger, he will not deprive you from your deeds of anything. Indeed, Allah is forgiving and merciful. The believers are only the one who have believed in Allah and his messenger and then doubt not but strive with the properties and their lives in the cause of Allah. It is those who are truthful. Say, would you acquaint Allah with your religion while Allah knows whatever in the heaven and whatever on earth, Allah is knowing of all things. Because sometimes we try to justify our sins. I'm very honest. I'm very sincere to everybody. You know, Allah knows the state of our heart. We don't need to say that. We need to rectify the actual state of our heart. Sometimes, you know, people, they start, uh, you know, uh, saying wrong things about you. Let them say, Allah knows your intention. They consider it favor to you that they have accepted Islam. Say, do not consider your Islam a favor to me. Rather, Allah has conferred favor upon you that he has guided you to the faith if you should be truthful. Indeed, Allah knows the unseen aspect of the heaven and the earth and Allah is seeing of what you do. So here we see Allah knows everything. Allah is watching us. So here we start Surah Al-Qaf. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Qaf wa Quran al-Majid. Qaf by the honored Quran. But they wondered there has come to them a warner from among themselves. They are amazed at the arrival of human prophets. And the disbelievers say, this is an amazing thing. This is uh, something so strange. When we have died and have become dust, we will return to life. This is a distant return. We know what a earth dis diminish of them and with us is a retaining record. But they denied the truth when it came to them. Meaning without even reflecting, they have denied the truth. So they are in confused condition. So Surah Al-Qaf, Ayah number 6. Have they not looked at the heaven above them? Means they should look at it. They should look at the sky. How we structured it. Means with beautiful colors, with moving clouds. And adorned it, how it has no rifts. And earth, we spread it out and cast therein firmly. Said mountains made grow therein something of every beautiful kind. So here, something of every beautiful, beautiful kind. You know, it's amazing. Even weeds. Even they look beautiful. Have you ever noticed weeds also look beautiful? It's amazing how when you when you are pulling weeds out, the kids will say to you, why are you killing plants? Because they don't know what weeds are. They think all plants are beautiful. It's yellow flower, it's dandelion and flower. So even if something is apparently useless, it's still beautiful. Min kulli zaujin bahij. Giving insight and reminder for every servant who turns to Allah. And we have sent down blessed rain from the sky and made grow thereby gardens and grain from the harvest. So here when he, it used to rain, Ibn Abbas anhu, would order his servants to have his clothes put out for him. And he would say, Wa nazzalna samai ma'an mubarakan. Meaning he would do that. Why? Because he would get wet in the rain. He would go out in the rain deliberately in order to get wet. And then he would have his clothes ready so that he could go and change immediately. It is Mubarak water. Indeed, because if you think about it, 
no matter how many sprinklers you get installed, no matter how much water you lawn, what rain does to your lawn? No, nothing else, right? But the rain water from the sky, you have sent down blessed rain. Mubarakan ma'an mubarakan here. Wala nakla bazigatillaha tal un nadiya nadid. And lofty palm trees having fruit arranged in layers as provision for the servants and we have given light thereby to the dead land. This is the resurrection. What do you think resurrection is so strange? The people of No denied before them and the companions of the uh, well and the Tamud and the Ad and the Firon and the brother of Lut and the companions of the Thicket and the people of Tuba all denied the messenger so my threat was justly fulfilled and number 15 surah al kaf did we fail in the first creation but they are in the confusion over a new creation meaning they should it be difficult for allah to recreate you allah did not get tired after creating you for the first time if that was the case then we would see trees growing back every year what do you see at the end of fall in the winter, trees are dead, barren, empty. But what happens every spring? They grow back. So as if they were never leafless, isn't it? So what do you think of Allah? You thought that Allah become tired? No way. Did he fail in the first creation? No way. But they are in confusion over a new creation. And we have already created man and know what is his soul whispers to him. We are closer to him than his jugular vein. Feel your jugular vein. Just touch your neck. How far is it from you? It's not far, isn't it? Allah, his angels are closer to us than our jugular vein. Is yatalakal mutalakiyani anal yamini wa anshimali qaidun. When the two receivers receive seated on the right and left, meaning the angels of Allah seated on right of a person and the left of a person, two angels. So person is never alone. You are never alone. So always they are with us. The angels are with us. And this ayah number 18, Surah Al-Qaf, مَا يَلْفِزُ مِنْ قَوْلٍ إِلَّا لَدَيْهِ رَقِيبٌ عَتِيدٌ Man does not utter any word except that with him, an observer prepared to record. What do you mean by prepared to record? What does he record? Everything that a person says, that a person does. You see, Allah has not let us like, you know, after creating us that we can think whatever we want and we can do whatever we want. We can say whatever we want. No, we have been created and it seems as if we are free, but we are not actually free. We are constantly being watched. Every action of our is being recorded. Every word is written. Even if we whispered into somebody's ear, it's being recorded. Man does not utter any word or soft or loud, good or bad, useless or beneficial, except that with him is an observer. Prepared to record. It's ready. The angel is ready. This is why it is so important that we guard the tongue. Prophet said, a person, he says something good. He does not think of its significance. But because of that statement, his status is elevated near Allah. Subhanallah. And at the same time, a person could say something, one word, and he does not consider it significant. And because of that, he falls in the sight of Allah. May Allah save us all. So it's so important that we are careful what we are saying. Everything is getting recorded. And the intoxication of death will bring the truth. It will be the true news. The news of death for which no repelling. This is what you were trying to avoid. All your life you will be trying to avoid death. But there is no escape from death. When Nufiqaf is sold and the horn will be blown. This is the day of crying out to the threat. And every soul will come when it is a driver and a witness. A person will not come alone that day. Every person will brought with a driver, meaning an angel to drive him 
to make sure that he does not run away and a witness to testify his deeds. Surah Al-Qa'afah number 22. If it will be said, you were certainly unmindfulness of this and we have removed from you your cover so your sight this day is short. Meaning now you see everything clearly before you doubted heavily. And his companion, the angel, will say, this record is what is with me prepared. Allah will say, throw him into fire, hellfire, every obstinate disbeliever, preventer of good, aggressor and doubter, who made equal with Allah another deity means doing shit and throw him into the severe punishment. His devil companion will say, oh Lord, our Lord, I did not make him transgress, but he himself was in extreme error. Means I did not force him, he himself was in an error. Allah will say, do not dispute before me while I had already presented you the warning. The word will not change with me and never will I be unjust to the servants. So here, Hal Tala Atil Vatakulu Hal Min Mazid on the day will say to hell, Have you been filled? And it will say, Are there some more? Hal Min Mazid, are there some more? Prophet there's a hadith, hell fire will keep on saying, Are there any more? Until the Lord of power and honor will place his foot over it, and then it will say, Kat, kat, sufficient, sufficient. And by your power and honor, its various sides will come closer to each other. Meaning hell will be contracted. It will be reduced. It will be shrunk. May Allah protect us all from punishment of hell. Because if you think about it, really the sins are so many. Sins is our, you know, so much. Our aqidah, what we think about Allah, what we see, what we hear, what we watch, what we think, what we do with our feet, with our hands, what we see with our tongues, endless. Every day we promise ourselves, today I'm going to do this. But what happens? We don't. So beg Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah save me from the hellfire. Allahumma ajirni min Allah. Wa zulfatil jannatu lil muttaqina ghayra ba'id. And paradise will brought near to the righteous ones. Not far. They will not have to bear any hardship in order to get there. Jannah will be brought to them for the righteous people. It will be said, this is what you were promised for every returner to Allah and keeper of his covenant. Meaning every matter he used to turn to Allah in joy, in worry, in stress, anxiety, whatsoever. Whenever he found something difficult in his heart, he turned to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He remembered Allah, begged Allah, awab. One who returns to Allah, Hafiz, one who guards the limits of obligation, the trust, the time that he has been given, the money he has, the efforts he is striving, everything, his tongue, he guards his, he, he guards his deeds. Likulli awabin Hafizin. Make note of this. Jannah is promised to who? Awab and Hafiz. The one who turns to Allah, one who guards that he is supposed to guard. And you see Awabin. Awab, the one who repeatedly turns back to Allah in remembering Allah, in seeking Allah's help and also in worshipping Allah. There's a hadith. Prophet Wasallam said, none will guard Salatul Duha except the Awab and that is Salatul Awabin. What is Salatul Awabin? That at the time of Duha, when the sun has fully risen, performing Salah at that time, who is it that can do that? Who is really consciously turning back to Allah. Because what happens? You sleep. You woke up. You pray your fajr. You do your stuff. And then you want to get busy with your work. You want to go back to sleep. But who will pray at that time? The one who choose to turn to Allah. Man khashya rahmani bil ghaib. Who fear the most merciful unseen. And came with a heart returning in repentance. Repeatedly turning to Allah. Enter it in peace. This is the day of eternity. They will, whatever they wish there in and with us is more. And how many generations before them did we destroy who were greater than them in striking power and explore throughout the land? Is there any place of escape? Meaning, did it save them from punishment of Allah? No. Indeed, in that is a reminder for whoever ha has a heart or who listen while he is present in mind. 
and we, he did certainly create the heaven and earth what is in between them in six days and they touched us no weariness means Allah is not tired so be patient O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa what they say and exalt Allah وَسَبِّبِ حَمْدِ رَبِّكَ قَبْلَ تُلُوِ الشَّمْسِ وَقَبْلَ غُرُوبِ Exalt Allah with the praise of your Lord before rising of the sun and before its setting. And for that you have to be awake, right? Ayah number 40, Surah Al-Fab. And in part of the night, exalt him and after prostration. Means make use of times and worship Allah. Do tasbih. وَسْتَمِي And listen on the day when the caller will call out from a place that is near. The day they will hear the blast of the horn in truth. That is day of emergence from the graves. Innama nahnu nuhi wa numidu wa ilayna al masir. Indeed, it is we who give life, cause death, and to us in the destination. Allah is saying that on that day the earth breaks away from them and they emerge rapidly. That is gathering easy for us. They are most knowing of what they say. You are not over them a tyrant, but remind by the Quran and whoever fears my threat. So those who take warnings of the Quran seriously, they will listen and change. May Allah make us among such people. Surah Al-Zariyat, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. In the name of the Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Al-Zariyat zara'a fal-hamilati biqra fal-jariyati yusra fal-muqas. سِمَاتِ أَمْرَ إِنَّمَا تُؤَدُونَ لَسَادِقَ وَإِنَّ الدِّينَ لَوَاقِقَ By those winds scattering dust, dispersing windstorm that scattered dust and those clouds carrying a load of water means heavy clouds carrying so much moisture and those ships sailing with the east and those angels approaching each matter. Indeed, what you are promised is true. Means take lesson from blowing wind, falling rain. The Lord at whose command all of this happens, Qiyama will also occur on his command. And indeed, the recompense is to occur. So, oh man, you are not free. You cannot do what you please. You have to meet the result of your deed by the heaven containing pathways. Indeed, you are in different speech. You see, every celestial body has its own orbit in the universe. So likewise, people also, they have differing speech. One person says about the hereafter, there is no afterlife. Another person has a very distort viewpoint of the after. Another says, oh, there is no eternity. Another says, there is no hell. Another says, there is a paradise for everybody. Each is guessing. Inna kum lafi kawlin mukhtalifin. Like everybody has the mukhtalif and different opinion. Deluded away from the Quran is he who is deluded. Deluded away from reality is the one who deluded, meaning the one who is not using his mind to understand. Qutil al destroyed are the falsifier, meaning those who were guessing. Allazina hum fi sahun, who are within a flood of confusion and heedless. They ask, when is the day of recompense? It is the day they will be tormented over the fire. And here, Surah Tuzariya, and number 14, and will be told, taste your torment. This is for that for which you were impatient. Indeed, the righteous will be among garden and spring. Innahum kana qabla zalikum muhsinin. Accept, accepting what the Lord has given them. They didn't waste their life guessing and talking. No, indeed, they were before that doer of good muhsinin. They were actively preparing for his home. So much so that Kanu Kalilam Mina Laili Ma Yajhad E Yahjaun. They used to sleep but little of the night, hardly few hours. And will as Hari Hum Yastavirun and in the hours before dawn they would ask forgiveness very beautifully. So Alhamdulillah, nights are short so that we can also say that we are getting to sleep and we can do Visahirin Yastavirun. We need to remember Allah. Busy yourself doing the tahajjud, do the zikr. There's a hadith Prophet said, 
Allah waits until one third of the first part of the night is over. He descends to the lowest heaven and he says, is there any supplicator of forgiveness? Is there anyone who wants forgiveness? Is there anyone who wants anything who is making dua? Is there anyone who wants mercy and favor? Is there anyone? And Allah keeps saying that until it is daybreak. So Allah is offering forgiveness at that time. But what happens to most of us? We are sleepy. Wake up for tahajjud. Get up. Do tahajjud. Ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We need forgiveness. Wafi amwalihim haqqul lissail mahroom. And from their properties was given the right of the needy, petitioner and deprived. Meaning from their wealth they give to those who asked and to those who deprived. Such an extent they wouldn't even ask. And on the earth are the signs of the certain in faith. And in yourself, then will you not see? And in the heavens is your provision and whatever you are promised. And by the Lord of the heaven and earth, indeed it's truth. Just as sure as that you are speaking. The hour is certain, it means. Hal ataka hadithu daifi Ibrahim mukrameen. And number 24, Surah Al-Zariya. Has there reached you the story of honor guest of Ibrahim? When they entered upon him and said, we greet you with salam, peace. He answered, and uh, peace upon you, your people unknown. Then he went to his family and came with a fat roasted calf and placed it near them. He said, will you not eat? And he fell from him apprehension. They said, fear not. Who is saying fear not? Angels. And give him good tidings of a learned boy. And his wife approached with a cry of alarm. And struck her face and said, I am a barren old woman. How will I have a child? They said, thus has said your Lord. Indeed, he is the wise and the knowing. Means look at the way Ibrahim al-Islam, Allah's friend, Khalil Allah, served his guest. And may Allah grant us such adab. As well that we also show respect to the people who come to us. Look at how he brings the food. He welcomes them. He puts the food in front of them. And then what amazing over here is that Ibrahim al-Islam, he is given good news of his son. And amazement of his wife is quite understandable because she was an old woman. At this point, when what we learn from is that Allah is knowing he is wise. He knows like, you know, she's amazed and she's so thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And she, she can't like, you know, amazement. She struck her face, you know. And he uh, and how uh, like uh, we we learn so much other from here how he uh, hospitality of Ibrahim al Islam and uh, not only that and the reaction of the wife of Ibrahim al Islam so we learn all this even though they were guests. He didn't ask, what should I offer you? What should I give you? He didn't ask anything. He just bring the food and he kept in front of them. He was so nice, even though he was Khalil Allah. He was the friend of Allah. So we should do the same thing. May Allah accept our, our, our small efforts. So here we end Juz number 26. And in today uh, class, we did uh, Suratul Hujrat. And also Surah Al-Qaf and Surah Al-Zariya. Jazakallah khairan kaseera. Subhanakallahumma bihamdika nashadu wa la ilaha illa anta nastaghfiruka nastaghfiruka natublika. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Jazakallah khairan.